Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is the ninth and final screencast for Electric Power, which is uh, part of the Unit 4 VCE Physics series. Today we'll be looking at uh, transmission of power and manipulating voltage and current to minimise power losses. To begin with, let's have a look at uh, what we mean by the term alternating current. That's what we've looked at producing in generators. And what do we have um, in a, what we have in Australia is a current that's generally um, produced at 50 uh, hertz. That is, it cycles or alternates back and forth 50 times every second. And it has a peak voltage of plus or minus 340 volts or 680 volts peak to peak. But we call this 240 volts. So, so how can we be peaking at 340 if we're running on 240 AC? And the answer is that we actually talk about a what we call a root mean square value. So whilst it has a peak value of 340 volts, really the effective value that we get is only about 240 volts. So anytime you see VRMS or IRMS or PRMS, it's about the effective voltage that we're actually getting, not the peak voltage. In order to do some calculations that uh, move between a peak voltage and an RMS voltage. Uh, we've got a few equations. The voltage, basically, voltage divided by root 2 from the peak to get the RMS value. Current is the same. And power is divided by 2, or half the effective power, half the power gives us the, the root mean square power. And that's because power equals V times I over root 2 times root 2. So if you had V times I over root 2 times root 2, you'd get over 2. So I mentioned just a moment ago that it was like the effective power that we get. So how, how do we come up with this value of the effective power? Basically, if we connect it to a DC voltage source, that's the same average output that we'd get as if using AC of peak 340 volts. So DC at 240, we'd be getting effectively um, 340 peak from AC would give us the same amount. So why do we use AC if DC requires less voltage? Um, one of the things we looked at last screencast was that it's much easier to transform AC than DC. The changing flux allows it to easily be manipulated. AC generators are also simpler and cheaper to make and run. We can easily use um, AC to switch things like circuit breakers uh, and it's much easier to concert, convert AC to DC than the other way around. So let's have a couple, look at a couple of examples using this RMS concept. Now we've got a 60 watt light bulb gets 240 RMS volts that is and use if it's 60 watts that means 60 joules of energy every second. Now a statement is that however the instantaneous power varies from 0 to 120 watts 100 times every second. Can we justify this statement? So minimum power is 0 volts twice every cycle where the current's 0 basically because we go up to a peak back to 0 down to a peak, back to zero. So twice every every uh, cycle, the current's going to zero. So P equals VI. The zero part's quite easy to justify. Now, peak current, or the, the current in terms of uh, RMS is power over voltage. So we've got 60 over 240 volts gives us 0.25 amperes. Now if we look at peak voltage, uh, peak, sorry power, it's peak current times peak voltage. So to go from RMS to uh, peak, we've got to multiply by root 2. So root 2 times IRMS times root 2 times VRMS is, well root 2 times root 2 will be 2. Multiply by IRMS, which came from our RMS values up here multiplied by VRMS, which is given in the question. So we've got 2 times 240 times 
1.25 amperes gives us a peak value of 120 watts, justifying the other half of that statement. Okay, let's look at another example. So we have an amplifier attached to um, a cathode ray oscilloscope or a crow, and it gives us an output showing the current and the voltage. So assuming that this axis corresponds to amperes and volts, uh, we can then do some questions. So what is the RMS voltage across the speaker? So we look at the peak voltage. Peak voltage is 6. To convert from peak to RMS, we've got to divide the peak value by root 2. That was the equation we saw in the uh, the first screen. And that is 6 over root 2 is 4.24 volts. RMS and we should probably have sub subscripted that VRMS. How much energy does the amplifier supply? Well, uh, we've got PRMS equals V times I over 2, power is voltage times current, dividing by 2 to put it into RMS. So you've got 6 times 3, which is 18, that would be the peak power. Divide by 2 is 9 watts, so we'd get an effective 9 watt output. What's the resistance of the speaker? Okay, we know power, we know voltage, we know uh, current as well, so we know all these things. So looking at this, we've got uh, voltage over current which is 6 divided by 3, we've got a 2 ohm resistance. Does it matter if we use peak or RMS? The answer is no, as long as you're consistent. If you use peak for voltage, you need peak for current. Okay, so let's look now at transmitting power. Unfortunately, Transmission of power is not really just as simple as generating it at some random site and then sending it straight along the power lines. We get significant power losses due to the current flowing through the wire and the resistance in the wire. Now, if we want to calculate power loss, um, power loss P equals I squared R. So it depends on current and resistance. Now since I is squared, that means the larger the current, then we get much more significant power loss. R is fixed, we can't change the resistance of the wire, so we can only reduce resistance by sending a smaller current. Okay, so let's just sort of recap that. To minimise power loss, things that we can do. We can increase V, to decrease I, so that's using the idea of the transformer, more than meets the eye. We can, or let's let's look at what factors are re affect resistance. Firstly, we've got the length that it's got to travel, we've got the area of the cable, and then we have the resistivity of the wire, the actual properties of the particular metal that you're using. So we could reduce the distance that it has to be travelled, that means more power sites closer to, we could use much wider diameter cables and that would reduce the resistance or we can use low resistance wires. We could make it all out of gold but really the question is what's easiest and more importantly what's the most cost effective way to do this. So ultimately V changes to V and I are going to be the, the best solution. So that's the reason that we actually have high voltage transmission of power. We generate the voltage, the current, the power at the site, but then using transformers, we minimize the current. We increase the voltage. So this is our starting point. If they're equal, if we increase the voltage, the current must decrease. So this is transformers again. And then we transform. Uh, transmit it over long distances using really high voltages. That gives us a small current and therefore reduces the amount of power loss that's experienced in the power lines. So in Australia that means that we are uh, basically voltages are being stepped up between about 220 kilovolts and 500 kilovolts. So pretty significant voltages that we're sending it over the longer distances. 
and of course we need seriously good insulation um, to stop that uh, discharging and earthing from the supporting power line, uh, pylons, the, the poles that carry the lines. So we've got glass or porcelain insulators and they're pretty big. Then we step it down as we're getting in towards, um, in towards the suburbs or industrial areas. So it steps down to 66 kilovolts, then 11 kilovolts, and then 240 volts if it's going into a standard suburban house, or 415 if we're going into more an industrial. So this is your three phase, this is your single phase. So if we want to look at that in terms of sort of a graphic we generated here at this power station, it's stepped up, travels at really high voltage, travelling a long distance, and then step down, step down, step down to the house again. So what are some of the problem solving strategies that we can use when analysing power transmission? So basically, when we transmit over long distances, we've got voltage and power that gets used up. Current never gets used up. Okay, the same number of electrons exist at the start as they do at the finish. So it's the voltage that gets used up and the power that is then consumed because P equals VI. If we lose V, if we lose P. So look at this diagram and we will just sort of make a quick analysis using this diagram as to how we can uh, solve or find you know power losses and things haha -ha, transformers all right so what we need to remember firstly current remains constant okay so from the second secondary coil here to the primary coil here current doesn't get used up that remains the same so voltage loss the amount of voltage consumed equals IR so you can find the voltage loss by multiplying current by the resistance in the wires. So if you want to find the voltage at C in the primary coil, do the voltage here at point A minus the voltage loss. So voltage here equals that voltage minus what you lose in the power lines. What else can we do? Let's look at power. If you want to find the power loss, that's going to be I squared R. So current squared times R will tell you how much power loss between point A and point C, or through point B as such, through the wires. Now, you can do this by calculating P equal to VI, or using V squared on R, but you need to know what V loss is, not use the actual starting voltage. I would avoid this just because it can cause some confusion. So the power at C, much like we did with the voltage, if you want to know what power input we have in the, to the second transformer, work out the power loss and subtract that from the power you started with. So those are the strategies that we need to use in order to solve this. And we'll work through some questions in class using uh, the, these strategies to solve the problems. Okay, so just to relate it to what we have at home, basically domestic power supply generally comes on a power pole over the top to the house or via underground cables. You have one wire, which is the neutral wire, so that's set at zero volts, and the other wire is your active wire. That's the one that's oscillating with the AC current. That should be minus 340 to plus 340. So make sure you copy that one down correctly if you write that down. And then when it comes to safety, all your fuses or safety switches and things must go on the active wire. Okay, if you put them on the neutral wire, then your active wire still got things coming in, so you actually need to cut this wire, not the other wire. Now, all the power points in Australia have an earth wire. This is also connected to uh, an earth electrode. So basically what happens is um, it's, it's not actually part of the circuit. It's attached, the earth wire is attached to the metal case of 
any appliance that has a metal case, obviously. And if a short occurs, so say the active wire or even the neutral wire um, touches and shorts the metal case, then the current discharges to the earth rather than discharges to the earth via you. It's through the earth wire. I uh, didn't see any of these in uh, Thailand. Some of the tools actually had them on, but they didn't actually, earthwise didn't exist. In fact, some, uh, some of the power tools that they had um, didn't even have plugs on them. They just had open wires that were wound together and you just sort of shoved them in and if they fell out, you just shoved them back in. Um, yeah, funny enough, there's a few deaths on work sites and the like over in Thailand. Okay, so still on safety, circuit braids off breakers or fuses um, are designed to break the current if it becomes too large. So a fuse is going to melt or you're going to have a large uh, current which is going to cause a circuit breaker to trip if, uh, if, you, if something's going wrong. Uh, an RCI or a residual current interrupt device uh, basically looks at the current that's going in and the current going out. If they're not the same then there's a current leakage somewhere and so it switches switches off or, or causes the uh, switch to trip as such. Okay, and then just looking at our standard PowerPoint, we've got our active, we've got our neutral, we've got our earth, and the active is the one that is on the switch. And if you actually look at the wires, the I believe the current color coding system is brown for active, blue for neutral, and green and yellow stripes for the earth wire. All right, that is it. We have just finished off uh, electric power for Unit 4 VCE physics. So well done. We only have an elective to go, which is you know pretty short. Oh, plus two sacks, but uh, that's all good. We'll get there. So buckle up, knuckle down. Let's get ready for these exams and sacks and smash them out and get some good results, eh?